Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. Today is Sunday the 19th of August and I'm sure you'll agree it's been, shall we say, an interesting summer from a climate perspective with unwanted records being broken all over the world. Right now, today, 100,000 people or more have been made homeless in southern India as a result of the most catastrophic floods that area has seen for a century. Wildfires continue to rage in California as well as Siberia and other areas around the Arctic Circle. Florida has declared a state of emergency as a result of toxic algae in their waterways and all sorts of other consequences of human-induced climate change are being brought to bear around the planet. By the way, I'd strongly recommend you go and have a look at Robert Scribbler's YouTube channel to get the benefit of his up-to-the-minute expert commentary on daily events in the United States and around the globe that are being influenced in some way by climate change. And you can click on this link to find him. So it feels very timely that as the world reels from a summer of comparative weather mayhem, the last few months of 2018 look like being just as action-packed from a political point of view as several crucial milestones are coming up that will bring into sharp focus what our governments are proposing to do to combat the growing climate crisis. Here's a timeline. In September, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, released their interim report on progress since the 2015 Paris Accord, including their prognosis for the future based on various possible scenarios. In that same month, an emergency conference will take place in Bangkok, Thailand. This conference was called by the UNFCCC back in May, with the aim of thrashing out exactly what has and has not been achieved by something called the Paris Agreement Working Party, or PORP, and exactly which achievements will be presentable at the next full conference of parties. In layman's terms, I think they're just trying to get their ducks in a row so they don't look completely stupid in front of the world's media and governments at the next COP meeting. In October, the United Nations Environment Programme, or UNEP, will release a report which will outline serious misgivings about our ability to stay within the parameters of the Paris Agreement. In November, the United States of America will hold what many commentators are calling the most important midterm elections in a generation. And then from the 3rd to the 14th of December 2018, our world leaders will all congregate in Katowice, Poland for the 24th Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which thankfully is abbreviated to COP24. So let's take a very brief look at what we can expect as an outcome of each of these key events. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, was set up by the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, and the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, back in 1988. It has 195 member states, and there are three working groups. Group 1 deals with the physical scientific basis of climate change. Group 2 deals with climate impacts, adaptation and vulnerability, and Group 3 deals with the mitigation of climate change. Here's the official title of the report due in September. An IPCC special report on the impacts of global warming of 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels and related global greenhouse gas emission pathways in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development and efforts to eradicate poverty. This and further reports due in 2019 are being written by 2,858 experts representing 105 countries. 44% of them are from developing countries, 53% are new to the IPCC process, and the proportion of women on the working groups has increased from 21% for the fifth assessment to 33% for this sixth report. I think we can look forward to some pretty stark conclusions when this report lands. Around the same time, the oh my god are we all going to get our stories straight for the COP24 conference conference happens in Bangkok, Thailand. Here's a bit of commentary from the official guide document to the participating parties. Adopting an outcome on the Paris Agreement working parties at COP24 that enables the Paris Agreement to be fully operational is essential. But the state of preparedness for that outcome remains far from ideal, with a great deal of technical work to be done and with multiple options and sub-options still on the table. In every area, it remains insufficient for completing the mandated work by December this year. If parties do not achieve this in Bangkok, a satisfactory outcome in Katowice will be in jeopardy. And just as a reminder of the sheer bureaucratic madness that some of these negotiations have to face, here's the final paragraph of the guide. The Bangkok session is the last opportunity for all of us to advance the negotiations before we gather again in Katowice. 
but that can only happen if parties make full use of each and every hour of this session. In Bangkok, we will have fewer days than at a regular session of the subsidiary bodies and will also face limitations of available meeting rooms. I know it's boring to have to stay in 23 hours out of 24, son, and we would have nailed climate change, I promise you. The problem was, there just weren't enough meeting rooms, son. Madness. What else? Oh yeah, October is UNEP's turn to submit their findings on the climate crisis. The report that UNEP are due to release in October was leaked in draft format in June of this year. Here's a quote from the leaked report. As already was clearly shown in last year's emissions gap report from the UN Environment, the current pledges made by countries in Paris, the so-called NDCs, or Nationally Determined Contributions, are totally insufficient to help meet the Paris goals of limiting temperature increase to well below 2 degrees C, let alone 1.5 degrees C. They, by which they mean the existing pledges, would likely lead to an increase of more than 3 degrees C. And worse, the policies currently implemented are not even meeting those pledges. What seems to be brewing in time for COP24 is nothing short of an international bust-up on the complete lack of sufficient activity by all governments around the world to do what they said they were going to do. Remember the first duty of any government is to protect its citizens, but instead it looks from the vantage point of normal folks like you and me that our politicians are more interested in protecting their careers. And that brings us nicely to the US midterm elections. Now, you folks over there in the good old US of A most certainly do not need someone with an accent like mine telling me that you've got midterms looming. You're probably already sick of the mention of them anyway, and the main elections are still a couple of months away. So perhaps more for the benefit of the UK viewers, here's how the 2018 US midterm elections work and why they're so crucial. US midterm elections are kind of like UK general elections. The US House of Representatives is where the laws are made, so that's like the UK House of Commons. Legislation typically then goes to the Senate for approval, so that's a bit like the UK House of Lords, except of course that the US Senators are elected, so in fact it's better. In 2018, all 435 seats in the House are up for re-election, as well as 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate. On top of this, there are also 39 state governorships up for grabs. So it's a big deal whichever way you look at it. But this year, of all years, it's difficult to see how the stakes could be any higher. Race, you look at the Alabama Senate race, you look at Pennsylvania 18, this is not Trump's time. Not when it gets to the general. He might dominate in the primaries, right. but not in the general. What do you think about So then we arrive at COP24, taking place between the 3rd and 14th of December in Katowice in Poland. Here's a few sound bites from key COP representatives recorded at last year's conference by the website Carbon Brief. Well, for one thing, there has to be much, much greater ambition reflected in the NDCs. Because Paris starts in 2020 and all of the countries released their NDCs or their uh, national pledges in 2015. Um, if you've all added them up, that's nowhere near 1.5. So to keep the Paris Agreement on track to deliver on its long-term goals to limit temperature increase to no more than uh, 2 degrees Celsius is a heroic endeavour. It's going to really require sustained action on the part of all countries. These aren't wacky people on the fringes of society. These are mainstream representatives at the United Nations Conference. What these people were calling for back in November 2017 has manifestly not occurred in 2018. So I think you can expect the gloves to come off in Poland and some very straight talking debate as a result. It's actually worth reminding ourselves of the words of the United Nations President Antonio Guterres back in March this year. In 2017, the hurricane season in the Caribbean was the costliest ever, undoing decades of development in an instant. In South Asia, major monsoon floods affected 41 million people. In Africa, severe drought drove nearly 900,000 people from their homes. Wildfires caused destruction across the world, and Arctic Sea recorded its lowest winter maximum ever. The oceans are warmer and more acidic than at any time in recorded history. Scientists are now worried that unless accelerated action is taken by 2020, the Paris goal may become unattainable. 
and I'm beginning to wonder how many more alarm bells must go off before the world rises to the challenge. No doubt about it folks, it's going to be a roller coaster of a ride towards the end of 2018 with no guarantee at all of cast iron resolutions coming out of anywhere to safeguard our future. That's it for this week. Please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell which is here somewhere and share the link if you can so that we can get as many people as possible thinking and taking positive action. As always, thanks for watching, have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.